the kiddos, today we are going to talk about density. Um, and density has two parts to it. Um, we're going to learn a couple of new terms in addition to density in this video. We're going to talk about um, extensive and intensive properties. Um, but let's jump right in and talk about what density is. Um, I think we all have some conception of what the word means. Um, that density means how dense or how undense something is, right? And obviously you shouldn't use the word to define itself. But what does that really mean? Well, there are essentially two parts to density. Um, the first part is mass, or as we might, you know, sort of more popularly put it, like the, the weight. And obviously weight and mass are not the same thing. We know better than that. Um, but so the mass of something, how, how heavy are the particles that make up that substance? That's part of it. And then the second part of it is, so that how tightly packed are the particles, we could uh, rephrase that into a different term that would probably be a more specific term to what we need to do, which is what is the volume of the particles? And I wanna really encourage you to think about things in terms of particles. I'm gonna draw a couple of diagrams up here. We're gonna talk specifically about particles because I think one of the biggest um, pitfalls in learning chemistry or in chemistry education as a teacher um, is sometimes forgetting to talk about the actual particles that do the chemistry, okay? The atoms and the molecules and things like that. We talk a lot about the equations and all that stuff. We really need to get down to a particulate level um, and be able to explain things there. And if you can do that, then chances are you probably know chemistry really well. Anyway, I digress. Let me draw up a couple of diagrams. Okay, so let's talk about particles. So I've drawn two diagrams. We're gonna talk about mass first. Um, so to do that, I've got two containers. They're going to be equal size. I probably didn't draw them exactly equal, but we're going to assume that these two particles have the same equal size, which means that if these two things are gases, which they are, one of the properties of gases, if you don't already know, that we'll talk about later this year, is that they're going to expand to fill whatever container they're in. And so that means the volume of these two things is the same. In other words, they're taking up the same amount of space their particles are about equally packed together, assuming that we have an equal number of particles of each, which I do, I put an equal number in each of those, okay? So for hydrogen, hydrogen always exists as a diatomic when it's in gas form, well, typically, okay? So that's H2, those two atoms together, each one of these things has a mass of two, and since I have eight of them, my mass actually is eight times two, and so that means my total mass is 16. If we assume that we're dividing that by one unit of volume, then that's gonna give us a density of 16. And don't worry where I'm pulling all the numbers from. These are the real values, and I've got eight particles. We're just gonna assume that since they're the same, that it's one, okay? It could be 40, but if they're both 40, it's gonna work out the same either way. So for helium, same thing is true. I've got eight particles in here, but helium is a heavier atom than hydrogen. Now hydrogen is basically a proton and electron, a helium is two protons, two neutrons, two electrons. Its mass is gonna be four, even though there's only one helium in each one of these particles, whereas there are two hydrogens. So the mass of each of these particles is four, okay? And so if we put those together, that would give us 32. We divided that by the same one. That would give me a density of 32. And what that shows us is that mass matters for density. If the Assuming that the volume that's taken up is the same, assuming that the packing of the particles together is pretty much the same, then mass is sort of the first thing that affects this. By the way, if we actually looked up what are the real values of the density of each of the gases, um, you would see that they were actually about, that helium is gonna be about twice what the hydrogen is. So the actual density of hydrogen gas is 0 0.082 grams per liter is 0.164 grams per liter, okay? So these are the real values. These were just my made up values. As you can see, the density of helium is essentially exactly twice the density of the hydrogen gas. Why is that? Well, because the mass of the helium is pretty much exactly twice the mass of the hydrogen gas. Okay, so that's the mass part. Let's talk about volume. Okay, so what about if we're talking about the volume instead of just the mass? So in this case, I've got helium in gas phase and in liquid phase. Now, if, it, if it's all helium and I've got the same number of particles, which I do, I have eight particles of each, then that means the masses are the same. So the only thing I've changed in this scenario is what is the density. So obviously in a gas, the particles are really far spread out. We just said in the last section that the gas particles are gonna fill up their container. When we reduce the temperature of helium, in other words, pull the kinetic energy out of it, allow those particles to slow down, 
they're going to come together. So liquid helium, the particles are much more tightly compacted together. They're basically touching each other and sort of able to flow around each other. So what that means is that the volume or, or the volume, or we could also say how tightly packed together the particles are is so much greater here in the liquid helium than it is in the gas phase helium that when we talk about gas phase helium, we said that it had a density of 0.162 grams per liter. And in the case of the liquid helium, its density is 147 grams per liter. Okay, now what does that mean? Well, that means that it's, you know, three orders of magnitude essentially larger than the, the gas phase. In other words, it's a thousand times more constricted down in space. They're, the particles are packed together a thousand times more tightly. Okay, so those are the two parts of density that matter to us. It's mass and it's volume. Okay, so that leads us to two types of properties, extensive and intensive properties. So here's what they mean. What we just talked about when we talked about mass and volume separately is that we talked about two extensive properties. Extensive means that amount matters. Okay, in other words, if I go to measure the volume of something in a graduated cylinder, okay, and I measure one measurement there, and then I pour some more liquid in, and the new measurement is here, the volume changes. It matters how much stuff I have in there. If I put an object onto a balance that has a certain mass, but then I put another object of the same material on there that's a lot bigger, the mass is gonna change. It matters how much mass is on there. And that's a little chemistry joke too. But the, the mass is gonna change. The amount of stuff that we have matters. So things like volume and mass are extensive properties. There's some other types of extensive properties too. We could say things like length, distance, th those sorts of things are extensive. The amount of it actually matters. Intensive properties though, it doesn't matter how much of the object you have, those properties are always the same. So for instance, let's say I have been weighing out nuggets of gold here. Well, that really, the mass really matters, right? Especially if I'm gonna convert that into currency, that really matters a lot. Intensive properties though essentially say, is it gold though? Is it shiny? Is it golden yellow in color? Um, is it malleable? Does it conduct electricity? And what's important to us in this particular video, does it have a constant density? The density of a substance doesn't change um, in a certain phase. So like solid gold always has the same density. Solid aluminum always has the same density. Density is an intensive property it's essentially, it's a property that is integral, inherent to that substance. Now, why is density that way, but the two things that make up density, which are mass and volume, are not? Well, here's the reason. Remember that our formula for density is rho, okay, or D, you can plug in D either way, but rho is the more correct version, is mass over volume, which means it's a ratio, okay? And since it's a ratio, if I increase my mass, I also increase my volume. It also increases the, the amount of space that it takes up, which means that the density is not going to change. The mass and the volume change at the same proportion. The proportion that they change at is called the density. So in our next video, we're gonna actually work some calculations with this formula. Um, remember that it's either way, these are both the same formula, they mean the same thing. Just the more technically correct um, variable there is the P, what looks like a P. It's actually a Greek letter rho. Um, so we're going to work through those calculations in the next videos. All right. Thanks, kiddos.